Hey, Kyle. Uh, congrats on getting to the UFC, man. I know it's a long time coming, and uh, you were on Contender Series last year. You grinded for the, for almost the whole year, and, and here you are. Uh, how does it feel, your first UFC fight week, to, to finally be doing the media rounds and getting ready for weigh-ins? Uh, it feels good. It feels uh, it feels familiar. You know, I've always envisioned myself here, so it's uh, it's uh, it feels like second nature. You know, it feels like home. And I know the last few weeks, it seemed like whenever there would be an injury or whatever, uh, you know, you'd be on Twitter saying, I'm ready, I'm staying ready. So as a guy that was a prospect not in the UFC, uh, things were really uncertain. So can you talk about what the last couple of months have been like as a guy that, you know, was on the verge of the UFC but didn't have that job and have to go through the pandemic and everything? Uh, yeah, you know, it was tough. Um, I thought I, I thought I might have had, have had to have gotten like a, a nine to five job. But, uh, you know, my family members and stuff told me to just keep pushing and uh, we'd eventually get the call. So. You know, I've been training really hard lately. Um, the pandemic has been tough, but, you know, I've gotten training in either in my house or a friend's house. And uh, I feel uh, good as new and, and ready to go. And I know your manager, Hector, posted a screenshot of the FaceTime. Uh, was that unexpected? Did you kind of have a feeling that that was coming or was that just totally out of the blue for you? Uh, no, you know, I, I had a feeling it was coming, but uh, but that day it was kind of, I, it was like I wasn't even thinking about it that day. You know, every other day before that, um, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, I was always checking Twitter, seeing if there was what was going on, seeing the news, uh, texting my manager, nothing happened. Um, but that day after we got done training, I wasn't really thinking about anything. And uh, I saw I had a missed call from my manager, I called him back and, and here we are. And your opponent, Brendan Allen, is he, is he a guy that you were familiar with? I know he was on the you know, LFA as you were coming up. Uh, give me your thoughts on him a little bit here. Yeah, I, I know who Brendan is. Um, I've seen him fight after me on the contender series. And uh, uh, I've always, I've always had a, had a feeling that we would, we would cross paths. It would just be a matter of time. Um, but yeah, I've always had an eye on him. Um, and I've always thought that I've, uh, I'm going to do very well against him. My last question for you uh, in terms of, you know, there's not a ton of middleweight prospects out there, young up and comers like yourself undefeated. Um, you know, what do you think you bring to this division? You know, what, what, what can people expect to see out of their first impression of you on Saturday? Uh, the same as they always say, you know, I'm a good pressure fighter. I take everybody down and submit them. And I don't think it's going to be any different on uh, June 27th. And uh, I hope to put all the middleweights on, on notice. Appreciate the time, Kyle. Good luck, man. Thank you. Our next question is with Jay Anderson from Kate Side Press. Hey, thanks very much. And uh, just a couple quick ones uh, from me. Um, how did this, uh, or when this opportunity came uh, about, I mean, how ready were you for a fight? Uh, were you already in fight shape? And did you feel it was on the horizon? Um, I, I actually had word of a fight uh, later this summer, um, but I wasn't allowed to announce anything. So I was training for that fight. And it just so happened that this, this call uh, had come early. So I, I really do feel like I'm more than ready. And uh, throughout training camp, you know, I, I was good. You know, I had a mindset of a training camp and uh, it was no different during the, during the, the you know, the tough time. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of distractions in the world uh, on top of the pandemic. You've got social unrest in the U.S. And I'm wondering if, if any of that has been a distraction or you've just been, you know, kind of totally laser sighted throughout this. No, you know, not at all. You know, none of that stuff bothers me. None of that stuff. I've, I've really stayed off of uh, Facebook and, and all the social media platforms. You know, I've stayed away from all that political stuff because you know, I just really think it's, it, it's bad mentally and uh, physically because, you know, it, it, it brings um, a lot of... Uh, aggression towards each other and it's just not good in the world is that just in relation to the current political state or is staying off social media something you think is probably a good idea in general because we do see a lot of uh, a lot of infighting a lot of back and forth on there yeah you know i think the social media is kind of like a gateway for people to just talk talk smack and run their mouth and and just be behind the, the keyboard you know I, I don't i don't i've never really been a social media person but uh you know during um this call and stuff like that, I had to get back on social media and, and, and really and really push it. But I'm sticking to just Twitter and Instagram. I'm staying off of off of Facebook because I'm not a big fan of Facebook. Fair enough. Well, I wish you the uh, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. That's all we have for you today, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you.